Hello and welcome to another one of my Microtik tutorials. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to apply a hairpin NAT to your network as well as being able to cope with that if you're on some kind of dynamic WAN IP. This is quite a common setup if you're a residential customer or if you're on some kind of business service where they don't provide you with a static IP address. Um, it's quite easy to do so just stick with me. Um, I am assuming a lot of things for this, uh, but obviously if you do have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment and I can try and help you out as best as I can. So in this tutorial, I'm using an RB2011. Um, I am actually accessing this through the SFP port. Uh, however, I will be assuming that Ether1 is my WAN, my internet facing uh, address. So the LAN IP range is here, 192.168.235, and the router is at .1, uh, and all my LAN devices will be on the rest of the slash 24. So at this point, you'll probably be aware that to do a port forwarding rule with Microtik, you just set up a destination NAT, uh, TCP, port number, whatever you want. Most people tend to do this through the inbound interface, which you would be quite right to do as your WAN interface and then you just do to address whatever your LAN IP is. This is absolutely fine for a port forward um, if you're coming from outside of the network. However, it's not if you're sat inside the network on that local side. Uh, generally what happens if you try and do this is that the router will turn its nose up because it knows where the traffic needs to go. However, you're not coming in through this WAN interface uh, and even if the traffic did get to your 235.20, 235.20 would respond to you across your LAN rather than going through the router. So all the connections which are forwarded need to go back through the router. So that covers a, a normal port forwarding rule. Um, the hairpin rule itself is really, really simple. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take my LAN IP range, which I'm copying out of my standard masquerade rule, which goes to the internet, you can see here. So I'm going to copy that range. And I'm going to create a new rule where the source range and the destination range are both the same. And I'm not going to mention any interfaces. There's not going to be an inbound or an outbound. And all we're going to do is just say masquerade it. Comment because it's good practice. Happen that. Now the important thing with a hairpin that rule is that it needs to catch your land traffic before it tries to go to the internet. So it needs to be at the first position in the queuing, which is zero on this router. So now we have anything which is going to be going from the LAN to the LAN. However, it's going to be going through the NAT, so effectively through the routing, so through the router. Um, hit that rule first, and then anything which doesn't really kind of fall into that rule will we'll just go to the internet as normal. Which is great. Um, at this point, though, your port forward still won't work because at this point we are naming an inbound interface. Now what you could do uh, is remove this and all of the traffic on your network will go completely fucking mental because um, anything traveling on that destination port then would, would end up going there and it would catch everything and it would be a complete shitstorm. Uh, so you don't want to do that. So what we're going to do is we are going to name it by the WAN IP address. Um, the easy way of doing this would just be to put in a destination address just there. Uh, however, we are assuming in this instance that you are on a dynamic one IP. If you've got a static IP, just pop it into that box there and you're away, you're good to go. You've done hairpin that. Congratulations. Stop the video and leave a like. Um, if you are on a dynamic one IP though, you do need to put a little bit more work into this. So what we're going to do uh, is we are going to go into IP cloud. Now this is quite an unused feature for, for a lot of Microtik users. Uh, this is a free dynamic DNS client. Uh, it only works with name. You can't change it to anything else. If you want other stuff like no IP, you, you do have to script it and it gets really messy. So why not use the free one which is there so all we're going to do is click enable and hit apply and then the nerdy geeky people are going to go nuts and go oh steve you're putting your one ip out there on the internet no this isn't my one ip i'm using a vpn dumbass so that's not my ip so it's fine for me to put this out nothing's going to come back to me so what we are interested here though is this this is the host name which is for this router so this router has now gone to a Microtik server somewhere, probably not Microtik's, it's whoever my net name is. 
Um, and that has updated it and said, hi, I'm this host name, I'm at this IP address, which is great. So we've copied that. This is where we're going to get a little bit clever. You need to be using a relatively recent Rootross version. 6.37 onwards uh, has this ability. 6.39.3 is, as of kind of recording this, the most current bug fix. Um, I recommend running bug fix for a start. Uh, it doesn't have problems, um, but this will certainly do it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the IP firewall and we're going to click on address lists. And we're going to create an address list and we're going to call it something really creative so it's it's memorable. So WAN IP is a pretty good example. And we're going to pop that host name into there. So what's going to happen now is I'm going to hit OK and it will resolve the host name back to an IP address. Which is great. Uh, what can we do with that? Well, what we can now do is we can go into our destination that rule, our port forward, and rather than putting a destination address, we can put a destination address list, which is the WAN IP. Hit apply. Hit OK. And that's it. So now you have a dynamic WAN IP, which is self updating. Your port forward will now self update. Every time that repolls its name, it will update that. Thank you very much, Windows. Every time your your host name polls itself, this will update. If it updates, it's so normally only when your router drops. So then your port forward will update itself. And then you can use as many rules behind this as you want just using that. Address lists is a very, very good feature of Microsoft Routeros, and you should use it a lot. Uh, it takes a lot of stress out of things. Um, so that's it, really. Uh, any questions, please feel free to leave me a comment, uh, you know, ask a question, tell me I'm stupid and there's an easier way. Otherwise, if you do find this helpful, please hit like, please visit my website, I've got a few more Microtech tutorials, uh, and I also am quite active on the Microtech community forum, it's a great place, there's a lot of people on there, a lot of very, very knowledgeable people um, who will probably also be able to tell you that what I've done is wrong, but there are significantly better ways of doing it and faster, only I don't think they'll be as simple as mine. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much, and yeah, please, uh, please leave a comment. Goodbye.